Okay, first we'll start with an oral reading of the lines. Ac velet e magno in populo cum saepe quarta est seditio. Saewitque animes ignobile vocus, yamque faces et saxa volant. That's a good place to stop. Notice we've got another part coming in here between the dashes, but we'll just stop right there. All right, first of all, and just as ac veleti, this is a sign that you have a simile coming. If you're not sure what a simile is, feel free to talk to your English teacher or your Latin teacher about it. Okay. All right, moving on. Magno in populo cum saepe quarta est seditio. Notice we have a prepositional phrase here. Magno is an adjective that modifies populo. So whatever happens next, it happens in a great crowd. Saipe is an adverb, but don't forget about cum. Cum here can either be when, since, or because, or with, but we know it is absolutely positively not a preposition with because there is no ablative noun running around in the vicinity. So just take it as a clause marker. Saipe is an adverb. Quarta est is actually your main verb here. Notice that quarta has an A ending. That means that Neptune is no longer the subject because Neptune is not feminine. So what is the subject of quarta est? Oh, here it is in the next line, seditio. So whatever seditio is doing, it is doing it in a great crowd. Now we will go on. Saewitque animis ignobile vulcus. Notice we have a noun adjective pair here, ignobile vulgus, the ignorant crowd. That is the subject of saewit. Apparently the ignorant crowd does this saewit verb. And then animis, oh, it is just a boring neowab noun in the ablative without its preposition. Okay, apparently when the ignorant crowd does this, all sorts of things go to pot. Yamque faces et saxa volant. These guys are nominative. Notice these forms could both be nominative or accusative plural, but your verb volant is not normally one that would take a direct object. Volant, which is the verb of, that means to fly, is an intransitive verb, so we need to have a subject with it. You're not going to have a direct object. So the subject of volant is faces et saxa. Okay, now we will continue. Furor arma ministrat, tum pietate gravum ac meritis, si forte virum quem conspexere silent, a rectis que aribus adstant. Okay, that is a good place to stop. Apparently, we are talking about when the torches and the rocks are flying, all sorts of bad stuff happens. Let's see, here's something bad that happens. Furor is a subject. Arma, again, it's an ambiguous form. It could be nominative or accusative plural, but since we already have a nominative here with for, we know that the for ministrats the arma. So that's your next kernel. Okay, let's keep going. Tum pietate gravem ac meritis, si forte virum quem conspexere. That is a handful. First of all, let's see. Pietate neowap noun in the ad, ablative without a preposition. Notice it is joined to meritis by the connector ac. So whatever it's happening, we've got pietate and meritis running around. Grawem is accusative. It is an adjective. It needs to modify an accusative noun. Let's see if we've got one here. Oh, there it is. Wirum. So whatever is happening, it's happening to a Grawem Wirum, a man marked or well known for or serious with pietate ac meritis. Now, what's up with this forte? Forte is not, I repeat, it is not an adjective here. Rather, it is being used as an adverb. If by chance, Conspexere. Oh, Virgil, really? Do you think that my Latin students are not going to notice that funky syncopation thing? So, conspexere 
really means conspex errant. Now the interesting thing here is, wait a minute, why are we having an errant? Where are we getting a plural subject? Out of the blue sky? Apparently, we're just going to have to assume that the subject is they, i.e. they meaning the people who are in the ignobile vulgus, the people who are in the ignorant crowd. So we went from a singular collective to plurals. So the people then in the ignorant crowd, they conspect sere, and they do that to a certain virum who is described as grawem on account of his pietate ac meritis. When this happens, the same subject of conspect sere, those people do this, silent. And they do this, adstant. And they do those things with this noun adjective pair, arectis oribus. What case is arectis oribus? Hopefully you recognize those ibos endings. That would be ablative. So apparently when there's an ignoble crowd, all sorts of bad stuff happens until somehow this man marked with pietate shows up. By the way, pietate. Do we know anybody else in the Aeneid who might be somebody who's known for his pietate? Just thinking. Okay, we will keep going here. Ile regit dictis animos et ille regit dictis animos et pectora mulcet. Okay, notice Virgil is telling us, hey guys, we are back to a singular subject. Ile refers to that guy over there. That guy, what does he do? He regits and he regits the animos with dictis. Wow, another neowab, another noun in the ablative without a preposition. And what else does this guy do? Et pectora mulget. Pectora, of course, is accusative plural. Ile is still the subject, so ile mulcet pectora would be the English word order. Okay. Now we've got seek telling us that we are reaching the conclusion of our simile. So apparently Neptune is being compared to these things, and now we're going to keep going. Seek thus contus pelagi cacitit fragor, icora postquam prospiciens genitor, Caeloque invectus aperto lectet equos, caruque volans dat lora secundo. So let's take a peek here. Cunctus. Oh, that is an adjective, and it modifies fragor. And pelagi is a genitive noun that also talks about fragor. Fragor is, of course, a nominative noun that is the subject of cacitit. So thus, the cunctus fragor pelagi cacitit. What else happens here? Icora postquam prospiciens genitor, caeloque invectus aperto flectit equos. So what happens over here? We have Icora. That A for this neuter noun tells us it's either nominative or accusative plural. But I very strongly doubt that the waters are all of a sudden going to become a subject and do something. After all, the whole point of this passage is that the waters and the winds are starting to behave themselves again. Icora postquam prospiciens. Oh, look, we have a participle modifying genitor, and this participle can take a direct object. So, Neptune, the genitor, prospiciens the Icora. What else does Neptune do? Caloque invectus. Oh, look, we have another participle modifying the genitor. And then we have a noun adjective pair here talking about the manner in which he travels. Genitor, invectus, caeloque aperto. But we're still waiting for the main verb. What does this genitor, who is described by one participle, two participle, what does he actually do? Here it is. He flected the accusative equos, and now we definitely know that genitor refers to Neptune because, of course, equos, that's his animal, right? And then we continue the passage. 
Karukwe Wolans dot Laura Secundo. Look, Wolans. That refers again to the subject of the sentence. We know that because the NS is not NS is nominative singular. So we're still talking about Neptune. Lots of things to describe him. We'll draw an arrow there. Wolans dot Laura Secundo. Oh look, noun adjective pair here. So apparently Neptune Wolans, and then here's your verb, dot. Laura is just a boring, neuter, plural, accusative noun. Notice Virgil saves one interesting thing for us at the end here. Kuro secundo appears to be another boring noun adjective neowap pair, noun in the ablative without a preposition. And that's because the U here in the fourth declension usually means ablative singular. However, that U can also be an alternate form for the UI, which is the dative singular. So in this instance, we have to look at the verb dot, and that tells us that we have the expectation of a dative noun. Neptune has to give his Laura to a dative, dative of indirect object. So Kuro Secundo is actually a dative of indirect object, even though it appears to be a neowap in form.